Oh, sun's going down. I took a uh, took a mucky road into this mossy timber that I haven't been on. Thought I better go snoop it and see if there's any good fish or goes to a good fishing spot. Looks like it just goes to one of these uh, off off the beaten track campgrounds. People made it into the campground, big hardwood hardwood patch of ground. So if I got enough time here while the light's going, I'm gonna get a little bit more sharing done. It's been a long winter. I don't know about you guys, it's been a, it seems like a bit of a long winter to me. Kinda sucks. This COVID thing isn't really doing us any favors, is it? Um, all right. I don't think too, I was hoping to see some elk in here. I know there's a herd of elk in here. I'd love to see them and be able to film them. And maybe see a big bull, right? It'd be really cool. But they're making themselves pretty scarce. Everything is right now. It's a one deer track in that whole river bed today. But anyway, <clears throat> hello Steve. I've been watching your channel for several months and I want to share something that may help in your audience. I'm one of those people who actually sought these beings out. It's a very long story, which I will not bore you with the details of. I just wish to share a few thoughts and one specific incident. All right, we're all ears. Back in, back in 2008, I met a local man who claimed he was interacting with a group of these beings not too far from my home. Needless to say, I really didn't believe him. I was under the impression these beings were some type of undiscovered ape. I live in a state in the U.S. that has very fragmented forests and lacks the vast wilderness areas I thought would be necessary for them to survive. After all, you can't really hide a troop of giant gorillas from millions of people who live in the nearest large metropolitan areas of the state. <clears throat> it made no sense to me. We agreed to meet at a local restaurant to more or less size each other up. Each of our families thought it was crazy to meet a complete stranger out of fear that something would happen to us. I remember the evening so well. I walked into the joint. And he was alone in a booth in the corner. It's just like a scene out of a James Bond movie. He looked at me, me at him, and we both nodded in agreement as a recognition of each other. I sat down and he began to tell me of his experiences in this state and his home state. He had transferred here for many years prior. He told me how he discovered these beings and pulled out some interesting game cam photos that grabbed my attention. Nothing definitive, but enough to pique my curiosity. He offered to take me to this small woodland where he assured me a small family group of these beings lived. He told me to call him any time and then we would go. We exchanged numbers and went on our way. Needless to say, this is the beginning of a great friendship that we still have. I was not so disappointed in our first outing. To be honest, it scared the hell out of me. He was telling me the truth. That first outing became as many as three times a week for the next two years, weather permitting. I can honestly say I was never disappointed. I was so excited I went out and spent about eight grand in all types of electronic recording devices, including a thermal camera. I have all this stuff to this day. You name it, I bought it. I eventually discovered it was all worthless when it came to documenting them. I began to notice that nothing interesting would happen when I carried all this stuff into our small designated sitting spot in this woodland. I began to experiment by walking in with it and walking in without it. Sure enough, the good encounters always happen when I left the equipment back at the truck. Strange, isn't it? I opted out for the experiences over the documentation. So this is eventually what happened. There came a point where my newfound friend wanted to prove to me these beings were not apes, but some type of people. My friend had a name he would call them by. It was a Native American word for tall man. Anytime we knew they had crept up on us, he would call them by this name and to tell them we meant no harm and were just there to learn about them. He would invite them to come close. Now this always happened about an hour after sunset while we sat in folding chairs about six feet across from each other so we would watch each other's back. We used no lights and had no fire. We had a set of rules we agreed to, like not pointing the direction of things, these things we saw or heard. We would just tell each other what it was. We would also ignore the obvious, as if we pretended not to notice anything that was happening. We sat in the heart of a forest in a small clearing surrounded by thick brush that would allow them to creep up closely to us. I know this sounds scary as hell, and at first it was. I learned how to control my fear. 
And that was the best thing about this because they always followed us back out in the darkness. They would always flank us on both sides and walk when we walked and stop when we stopped. This happened just about every time. I got used to it and expected it to occur. There'll be a couple of ducks splashing in the water up beside me. This is when the world changed for me. This one summer night seemed rather uneventful and I was disappointed by the lack of activity. So my friend told me this. I really hate to do this and it'll probably set us back a bit with them, but I need to show you they are not apes. So my friend spoke into the darkness with a loud voice. Here, tall man. Come here, tall man. Then followed up with a series of rapid whistles as you would call a dog. About 100 yards into the south of us, along the tree line to, an out, to our clearing, a loud blah, ugh, pierced the darkness, followed by crashing through the trees with limbs popping and cracking like a freight train. It was going away from us, not towards us. The sound it made as it stormed away was exactly the sound we make when we vocalize something we are disgusted with. Like if you ate something nasty tasting and you spit it out. You didn't need words to understand what this being just vocalized. It was the sound of being disgusted. I was shocked. It understood the name he had given him. He understood the context and how his name was being used. He knew he was being called like we call a dog and he was disgusted. Holy shit, they are people. And they understand the context of how his name is being used. I will never forget that. Then it all came to me in a flash. This is how they can hide under our noses. This is how they can avoid detection despite all our technology. Only people can avoid people. I theorize they have a culture that is more like special ops military, all centering on avoiding us. Makes perfect sense. Through observation, they realize how predictable we are in their environment, and they act accordingly to each their young from an early age. And they act accordingly and teach their young from an early age. Now all this happened in a very small woodland, not far from one of the United States' largest cities. I eventually discovered they are in every single one of these woodlands, no matter how dense the human population is. Because of this, I've become very secretive about their locations and no longer share this information with anyone for these being safety. I put all my equipment away and no longer feel the need to prove their existence to anyone. This happened many years ago, and my friend and I had some really close encounters, including having one charging from behind in the dark and stopping where I could have reached out and touched him. But that's another story for another day. So here I am, 13 years later. All the things I hear that they can do, I have experienced. They have followed me home, heard them speak, heard movement, but could not see its source, etc. Apparently some can do what people call supernatural things. I have experienced all of it. I do not regret a single thing about it. In fact, it has made my life much richer and robust and has not destroyed my love for the outdoors. I got more than I was looking for. I'm still interacting with the same group, just not as often. I've even taken my sister and her young daughters out to meet them. I know so much more about them than anyone would ever really believe. What everyone needs to know is this. They are not monsters. They are people and they just want to live in peace. What makes them so scary is they are not defined and explained by humanity. They are a mystery and humans are terrified by what they do not understand. I get it. Anyone who has had their life destroyed by seeing one needs to understand they just want to be left alone in peace. If they run you out of a place, it's for one of two reasons. Number one, your presence is causing some type of disturbance with their lives, interrupting hunting or scaring their women and children. Number two, they are trying to protect you from something else that is really dangerous. They do not mind sharing their home with us as long as we respect their time. This is why they tend to get rather pissed off when it's dark. They see it as their time and not ours. Please tell your audience this is the best way to avoid them. When you walk into a forest and you're uneasy, just speak out loud. Greetings, my name is, insert name, I mean you no harm. I'm just here to hunt, fish, bird watch, walk, or just enjoy the trees and then go home. Please do not make me afraid. It is important to use the word afraid. They seem not to understand, scared, frightened, etc. Often, some of the small rock and stick throwing is youngsters playing around and trying to hone their skills at what they can get away with without us noticing. I totally understand how some people give up their love of the outdoors once they discover they are real. Please try to convey they are a lot more concerned about you being there than you are. 
They, as a people, have been watching us forever, and they know what happened to the Native Americans when the white man with guns showed up. They are fully aware what guns do. I never went out into the woods armed. I live in a state where there are no black bears, wolves, feral pig, or cougar. There is no sustainable habitat for those species here anymore. Crazy. Please forgive me for not giving out my location or name. I learned a long time ago, smart people can discover where your locations are if you give them too many details. Sincerely, the Owl Man. All right, man, that's one hell of an email share. That's a hell of a share. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And a lot of what you just shared sure certainly makes sense, doesn't it? And, uh, I came to the conclusion these beings were not an ape a long time ago. And that was that was from my own observations and not from uh, listening to some mainstream media person telling me what's up, right? That's actually what I've done for myself. I go out and I watch, I observe people, I learn from watching people, I learn from people screwing up, and I learn from good, honest people, and I learn more from first-hand experience. I rarely, rarely take anyone's word as it when it comes to any topic. I have to go slam my face in the brick wall a few times myself first to learn my own lessons and uh, confirm and figure it out for myself. But um, it is an amazing item. And like I was saying to a friend of mine the other day, this topic is probably the easiest one to present to the public to show you all that we are being lied to and that we don't know shit and that our true probably our true past and who we are is being kept from us, right? It's funny, you know, there's no shortage of mention of what the, the, what the quote, the white man has done around the globe. But don't forget, every one of you, do not ever forget that it doesn't matter what color, what race, what continent you're on, every human being, every tribe of human beings has gathered up a war party, party and gone off to their neighboring community of, of a different opposing tribe and killed them randomly. Killed them, stolen their women, and turned them into slaves. Okay? Every single race in the face of the planet has done that to each other since time began. All right? Sure, the white man's been labeled as doing all these atrocities for certain around the globe, but so has all of the other ethnic groups as well. All the other colors, the races, whatever you want to call each other. Every single human being is guilty of murdering their neighbor since time again. Okay? So anyway, enough of that babble. I got enough time. Let's see what else we can dig up out of the, uh, the February folder. I haven't even got through all the other past months. I never got through them all. I'll go back and get them, though. It's the last light. It's the witching hour for wildlife. It's going to be sounds. It's usually when, this, when the forest comes alive, right? First light through the night and last light. Our last light through the night. First light. Hi, Steve. I'll try to make this short as possible. But there is a backstory. Please bear with me. I emailed you a year ago or so about Sasquatch, black bears, and a cougar, about my encounter with the Bigfoot while digging ginseng. The truth is, I've held on to a story about my first sighting. I've only told a handful of people and have always been met with the yeah, right attitude. When I told my wife about it, she snickered and just said, no, keep in mind i am the bigfoot guy of the family and i've tried several times to get my wife to listen to your channel and she always poo-pooed me and laughed it off in my original email we we're still living in phoenix arizona the circumstances have landed us in the back of my home state of kentucky recently being an avid fisherman and root hunter i'm in hog heaven again lol anyway my original experience with these damn things when i was about six years old and is forever burned into my memory we were visiting my cousins in a very rural part of eastern Kentucky. It was dead summer, and the AC consisted of open windows and box fans. The fans, the boys, were piled up in one room, and the girls in another. Just as daylight broke, I was awake, laying on a pallet with two of the older boys, when all of a sudden a huge, dark, hairy arm reached through the window and was grabbing things off the dresser. 
I was petrified, and all I could do was bury myself between my cousins and pray. It was only there less than a minute, and then nothing else. Of course, when everyone woke up, I told them what happened. My cousins looked very concerned, but my aunt said, Oh, that's, that was just them boys playing a prank. That was just a costume, right boys? They just shook their heads in agreement, and we went out to play. Naturally, being a six-year-old boy, I immediately started hounding them to get the gorilla suit out so we could play King Kong, but they refused, and the rest of the visit went without incident. Looking back on that day, as I got older, it dawned on me. Steve, those people were dirt poor. They had an outhouse, and the only running water they had was to a sink in the kitchen, cold water only. I don't see them forking over the money for a gorilla suit when that money would have obviously been spent for necessities. Fast forward to a week or so ago, I've been checking out my new area and asked my wife what she would think if Bigfoot turned up in the vicinity. Steve, she looked up as serious as could be and asked me to please be careful when I'm out in the woods. I asked her why and her response made my jaw drop. She told me about a family get-together she had when she was 11 at a grandparent's house in southeast Ohio. Most folks know this, but the southeast part of Ohio is Appalachia, complete with hills and hollers. Her mom was sort of the black sheep and had stepped over to the wood line to have a smoke when an obvious male Sasquatch stepped out of the woods and grabbed her mother. Everyone there saw it happen, and the men immediately ran to the house for a shotgun, deer rifle, and a revolver her grandpa owned and stormed up the hill after them. They returned a few hours later with her mom, who was obviously an emotional wreck. They called the sheriff's office and reported the incident. Apparently, they had tracked them down and killed the Sasquatch. The deputy walked with them to examine the body and instructed everyone to stay away and that someone would be there soon to deal with the corpse. Within a couple hours, two vehicles pulled up and walked into the woods. Shortly after that, a helicopter appeared, and she assumes that is how they removed the body. The men came back out of the woods, and after the helicopter took off and instructed everyone there to keep this incident to themselves and no follow-up of any kind was ever done. I hear the emails you read about these things being killed, and shady characters come to re retrieve the body with no explanation. Apparently, this is standard operating procedure. I know people will say this is nuts, but all these people can't be lying or mistaken. The truth will have to come out soon. People are starting to get over their fear and speaking out. It's only a matter of time. Thank you for all that you do and never stop doing it, Gene. And that is quite a story, Gene. And, uh, Thanks again for, for sending that email in. And uh, there is no shortage of there's no shortage of stories of these things getting killed. And like I said, I know I haven't got around to it. I've got the stack of of interviews of people who shot and killed these killed these things that Bobby Short put together, and it's in a stack of papers, typed out, printed off, and I just haven't. God, I've, there's so many things I haven't got to do. I'm behind on a lot. This takes up a lot of time. Life takes up a lot of time. But uh, I'll get to it. But as far as the 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 uh, the facts go about these things getting whacked, dumped, dropped, killed, and then getting taken away, and everybody in the vicinity being threatened to keep their mouth shut, that's a fact. <laughs> it's happened numerous times. And uh, like you said, it's only a matter of time until it's proven. It's been proven. It's been proven a gazillion times. Right now, I think what we're doing is just breaking that barrier of, of being suppressed is what's going on. That's what the Internet's allowing a lot of good people to do, although the Internet represents a lot of darkness, right? But um, I firmly don't believe that more of these beings are being seen as of late. I firmly believe that it's only because we can all contact each other around the globe with a simple push of a button now. And, um, and more of the truth is being shared that way, which makes it seem like these things are being seen a lot more often. But I don't believe that's true. I think that uh, these beings have been seen this often for as long as we've been running around upright on the face of the planet. So There you go. That's quite the experience. It's amazing. It would be amazing to me to picture that if one of these beings grabbed a human being, especially a woman, who weighs a lot less than average than a man, it's amazing that simple human beings could run the opposite direction 
grab all the guns and run after it and pursue it after it had that head start and actually catch up to it and kill it. How the hell did they pull that off? That's something else right there, don't you think? I mean, uh, I know there's a handful of hunters in near Nordeg, Alberta, and they witnessed one of these things grabbing a full, mature bull elk off of their meat pole, had its hand around its muzzle of its head, cocked its head over its shoulder, and took off running with it. So what's your average Rocky Mountain bull that far south or north? It's probably going to be 800 pounds anyway, right? So how the hell did that thing screw up and allow a handful of humans to catch up to its ass and kill it when it had probably what? 110 to 100 110 to 130 pound chick, woman to carry? That's nothing. It's amazing. That's one of my creepier things too. One, one thing that makes me cringe is when I see small children playing out rurally alone where there's black bears. You know, after reading a story, there's what happened in Williams Lake and his example, a woman went in her house, three or four year old playing outside in the backyard with her, just went in the house quickly to get a glass of juice for the kid. Sunny afternoon, one in the afternoon and came out just in time to see the black bear disappearing into the bush on the other side of the lawn with the kid in his mouth. Very, very sad, tragic story. And that child was killed by the bear. But even then, when I picture it, you know, like how you would never, it wouldn't matter how important it was, you are not going to catch up to a simple 200-pound bear with a human child in its mouth running from the forest. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You can run after it and make it drop drop the kid for certain. But just knowing the power of your average predator and the importance that it has when it's locked onto its prey, they don't they don't avert that locked on it's like a it's like the uh like a, a guided missile on a fighter jet, right? Once it's locked on, it's locked on no matter what. Your your average predator has ultimate focus on its prey animal. No matter what, it, 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 it like puts on the blinders and blocks everything else and concentrate and hones in on that prey, grabs it, and proceeds to kill it or take off with it. But yes, you can make them, you can make your average natural known predator drop its, drop its, uh, its load of meat or body or corpse or prey, whatever you want to call it, and run. But it's something else to try to picture a Sasquatch being getting caught up to with a human being in his grasp and getting killed because of it. That is quite the story, man. Thank you very much for sharing that. And if anybody else has anything similar, email it away. Email it in. We'll get to it and we'll read it and share it, man. What do we got here? Thank you. Title, thank you. Steve, I've enjoyed watching your channel for the last 10 months or so. I discovered it by accident. However, I found the format very intriguing. Thank you for sharing thank you for sharing on behalf of those of us who have nowhere else to go with our daunting experiences you're a living proof that integrity justice and nice and shining armor you stand for and with the underdog still exist thank you very much for those kind words i absolutely appreciate it though my experience is only hair raising i've learned through listening to other stories that it was not a cat in march 2009 when i was on vacation with my husband in big sur california after a day of horseback riding on the beach, we returned to our cabin to discuss our next day's adventure. One of the local restaurateurs rec rec recommended the Olidson Trail, just to the east of Highway 1 at the McKay Way Falls parking lot. This trail is located in the Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park. The terrain is steep with many switchbacks. The surrounding greenery, dense, with majestic California redwoods, moss, and ferns covering the forest floor. A round trip of five miles and a climb of 1,450 feet. We packed sandwiches and fruit for lunch and started our day with clouds in the sky but no rain. The area is considered a rainforest, so patches of fog in the forest and coincidental drifts of moisture from the other trees was normal. Our experience was amazing, picturesque and majestic, crossing small brooks and streams as we went. We were well aware that we were in mountain lion country, so we made sure that our presence was made known through continual conversation and sweeping eyes over the terrain. When we reached the top of the trail, the forest opened into a beautiful blue sky and warm sunshine. As we approached the cliff to catch a glimpse of the ocean, we heard the sound of a large bird swooping over our heads in response to cries of hungry hatchlings. 
It was a California condor. Huge bird, the wingspan of nine and a half feet, three meters. Wow, that's big. We stood in awe for about 15 minutes observing its, magi- observing its majesty. We then decided to eat lunch and just sit on the rocks on the top of the cliff. Back to the ocean, though we could hear it, we initially could not catch a glimpse as we were above the cloud cover in the stratosphere. It was like looking over a field of whipped marshmallow as far as the eye could see. There was a light breeze and we enjoyed the gentle warmth of the 65 degree weather. After a couple hours, the cloud covered thin so that we could see the water crashing on the cliffs 1,500 feet below. Where, With careful observation, we could see stellar sea lions on the rocks below enjoying the safety of the rocky seashore in the sunshine. After two or three hours of glistening water and amazing sunny peace, we decided to head back to the trailhead. It would be dark in two hours, and sunset comes quick in the dense forest. As we made our descent, my husband decided to jog down the trail. In the process, he made quite a bit of noise from his footfall and it echoed off the mountainside. When he was around the bend about 300 meters ahead of me, it happened. I froze. The hair on my neck went up and I felt like I was being watched. No, hunted. It quickly came to my mind that I was in mountain lion country and I was alone. Though I could hear my husband, he was not within my sight. I could not move and I felt that impending doom that overwhelms and takes one's breath away. I stood there for what seemed like an hour. Though I looked around the trail mountainside and up in the trees, I could not identify anything out of the norm. Absolutely everything was still. I began to breathe very slow and deep. Suddenly, an intense peace came over me, and I quietly proceeded down the trail. The feeling was intense, and I can only describe it as silent. Respect. Eventually, I caught up to my husband, and we arrived at the parking lot about an hour later. I never shared this experience with him or anyone until now. As I reflect on this experience now, I do not believe that it was a mountain lion that I encountered. As you have said, Steve, a cat will never make its presence known. Whatever it was, had it wanted to harm you in any way it could have, would have. I have loved the mountains and the beach since I was a child and grew up camping in the Sierra Nevadas. I have camped alone with my service dog in San Simeon, California, and have never questioned my safety. Though this experience caused me to feel a fear that I have never known, I have not felt it since. Thank you for a safe place to share my experience. Cheers, Alicia. All right, Alicia, thank you very much for the kind words, and thank you for taking the time out to type out that email and share it here with all of us. I really appreciate that. And obviously, you already know that dozens of other people have had the same experiences as you have as well, right? And it is just one of those things. I'm kind of a little bit disappointed that your husband went ahead. you like that? No. Uh, just from what I know, just me from just from natural natural predation, um, I don't let anybody out of my sight. You want, especially when it comes to, to my partner, when it comes to Sarah, or any of the kids we take out in the woods. Um, I don't let anybody out of my sight ever. And if we ever do go into some questionable zones, I'm packing. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I'm actually packing. Let's just say I'm packing far times more than I'm not just for safety you, you just you don't know what is going to happen you don't know what we don't know everything but one thing we do know is that we are very we are a very very vulnerable species out here in the wilds our smell sucks our hearing's okay our sight's really good and our and most of us aren't in tune with our sixth sense most of us aren't even in tune on how to how to carry ourselves out here in the woods what sounds to listen for um what animals do tip you off to predation predators nearby kill sites are nearby we just the majority of humans today are just just bumbling through places like right behind me like toddlers do it's a sad fact it's a sad state of affairs actually the disconnect between humans and the real world today is absolutely i don't even know the word how to describe it it's just sad it's very very sad to me the disconnect and the uh, the reprogramming of society, which is leading us absolutely away from who we possibly truly were, who we are, and what we could be doing. It's a sad thing. But thanks again for sending an email, and uh, stay in tune with your sixth sense, all right? And don't let that man get ahead of you like that again if you're out in the woods. It's not a smart thing to do. 
Dear Steve, thank you and your channel for giving me much needed solace as well as knowledge and data points. You'd be interested in what happened to me a year ago and twice more very recently near the Humboldt Mendocino County headwaters of the Matoli River. After an encounter with the inexplainable, I've become absolutely convinced that some unknown animal exists here and I began on and I began on the internet a search of similar account. While immersed suddenly in this mystery, it became clear to me that these experiences must be documented and conveyed to others. Last July 2018, I was staying in a very isolated region, which had very limited access behind three lock gates 20 miles south of Whitehorn, California, on a primitive 4x4 road. This place is literally at the end of the road, a lost world of primeval forest in the northern border of a vast green belt spreading from Shelter Cove on the Lost Coast east to Highway 101 and south to Fort Bragg, as can be seen on Google Earth. About 3 a.m., I was awake. It was a hot, dark, and completely silent July night in these mountains. Something above my tent location, approximately two to 300 meters, began knocking on wood, that's described as loud wax on a tree trunk by a big club or a branch. It started with one knock, which got my attention. With a brief hesitation, then several more knocks, but randomly timed. Some in succession, others after hesitation. The knocking was loud, so loud that it echoed down the canyon, down the canyon in the stillness. The event lasted only a minute or two. My first thoughts were that these that was no one my first thoughts were that there was no one on the mountain who could be out there in the middle of a primitive and protected area. These knocks went from something large and no North American animal could have made them. Listening intently while my mind tried to wrap around how the noise was made, I began to wonder about Bigfoot legends. The night fell silent again. Afterward, I told a few locals and learned there had been many Bigfoot sightings near Piercy and north to Willow Creek. Flash forward to two weeks ago, when waiting at the first lock gate to the same conservation area, I heard two distinct vocalizations which, which cannot be explained. As I waited in the dusk for about 45 minutes, Waiting to meet a party at the gate who were running late, I heard a very loud wail slash scream slash call that I've never heard before in nature. The call of this thing I located about my two o'clock facing east and up in the heavily wooded area above me, about two to three hundred meters. I instantly knew where I had heard such an unfamiliar call. About three years ago, I'm watching a Bigfoot reality show where these Sasquatch hunters were making this strange, unique call. At that time, I remember thinking how ridiculous it seemed for people to be on television, trekking at night, making strange calls in the woods. There was a few second delay from the first call, then a few more, then silence for about a minute, leading me to wonder if this whole experience was surreal. Pondering what I know about the wilderness, either that was an unknown animal or some kind of implausible prank, but it was loud, echoing down the mountain, as though some huge creature could belt with the lungs a Pavarotti, only much louder. The chance of it being a prankster waiting in silence with me for 45 minutes in that remote location just to hang out in these impenetrable woods and prank me was highly unlikely. Having only a moment to ponder this oddity, there began another call out. At about three to 400 meters up to the north of the first, approximately my 8 o'clock. It was also just as loud, but became only three calls in succession. Ooh-ah, ooh, ooh-ah, ooh. Ooh wah ooh, with a distinct higher pitch on the ah. This absolutely blew my mind because the first call made me a tribute to an elk on steroids, but the response from what was clearly not an owl brought chills down my spine. I quickly moved closer to my vehicle and listened for another 30 minutes in the darkness. I'll never forget this second vocalization as it was so unique, and this was obvious communication between two, invi two individuals as well as possibly a rudimentary language. I had a fourth experience, which I must mention here in context, but it happened just the night before the dual vocalizations. On Friday evening, November 1st, 2019, I had just moved into a cabin that my brother and I rented, located along an extremely rugged canyon area of the Matoli River. It was dusk, quite dark already in the forest. I was outside looking at the stars, taken in the newness of these rugged surroundings. Up above again, about 300 meters up to the east of the river, there's a screaming that was so loud and so foreboding that I could only listen in amazement. It was the loudest screaming I've ever heard. So loud 
I thought it was produced by some kind of banshees from a horror film. The screaming continued, full throttle, for over five minutes. I know mountain lions, I know mountain lions can scream, but nothing like this. It sounded much louder, more guttural. Li Might be some elk over there in the timber. It was sounded much louder, more guttural. Literally as if someone had set up loudspeakers and played the bloodiest scream that Hollywood could produce. At the time, the night after Halloween, I wonder if someone was up on the mountainside pranking me as a newcomer to the neighborhood. I listened for a bit, then went inside and told my brother about it because it was so unnerving. Bigfoot did not ever enter my mind. But then at dusk, the very next evening, I witnessed these two calls waiting at the gate. I've since been over and over in my mind, why have I been so lucky as to hear or experience such mystery, much less three distinct vocalizations which cannot be explained in a 24-hour period? I began poring over USGS maps and satellite imagery to ascertain what the link may be, some 15 miles apart. Were there any people or neighbors or access for individuals in the areas I experienced which may explain these things? I've since hiked all these areas searching for any activity but found only empty dense woods. Could one creature in such obvious stress one on one night have triggered the coincidental travel of at least two more unknown creatures at the very next night? I've talked to many locals about hearing strange noises, but no one claims anything or they don't want to be ridiculed. I'd like to know if there have been recent experiences by others in my area. I'm a 60-year-old man with a high degree of credibility, extensive wilderness experience in forests and jungles. I've trekked and lived in remote areas in Africa, Australia, Central and South America, many places of potential danger, and have never had an inkling of fear. I was born and raised near Yellowstone Park and never had bad experiences with grizzly, mountain lions, or wolves. Traveling all these years with a firm understanding of ecosystems, I never could have believed in such mysteries that anything new would ever be discovered. What has happened to me recently has completely changed me on many levels. There is a mystery in these woods, and I have a few ideas how to find the answers to it. If anyone else has had similar experiences who live near me, I am eager to share and explore this phenomenon further. Troy Hunter. All right, Troy. Um, you left your email, but I don't know if you wanted me to share that publicly on the channel or not, so I won't. All right? But if somebody... It's going to be tough. It's just tough for me to to stick handle all these emails, especially if you want me to put connect you with other people. That means I'm going to have to offer up your email on my email and then potentially find emails from other people looking to connect with you via your email. <laughs> it's be a little uh a little be a little bit much. Oh, there goes an eagle behind me. Anyway, the sun's going down. I'm along the Squamish. I'm in the Squamish Valley right now. I'm still up, up the uh, up the logging road in the valley. It's getting chilly. I'm getting hungry. I don't know what that sound is. Think it'd be chainsaws, but a little late. Dirt bikes, chainsaws, whatever. It's echoing through the valley. Sure, it'd be cool to see some elk. But anyway, if you guys want to share an experience you've had with everybody here, you can email it to share my story at howtohunt.com or tell my story at howtohunt.com and we'll get to it. We will get to it. That's Chainsaw. So we're probably cutting firewood after work. Well, it's a little bit. You know what? While I'm here, let me get one more. It's just, you know what? There's so many. There's so many emails. Hi, Steve. Please do not use my name. Thank you for what you do. My dad introduced me to your videos. I hate to admit it. I was one of those that said, but anyone could make up a story and send it to him. After he showed me one of your videos, everything clicked. I've never been an outdoors person, but have, a, but have a great appreciation for Mother Nature. I didn't know it at the time, but I believe I had an encounter. I didn't hear, see, or smell anything out of the ordinary, but I had an overwhelming feeling come over me of pure terror, telling me to get out. 
and I also felt like I was being watched. It was so intense I was shaking and wanted to vomit. In 2014, I was stationed on a Navy base in Washington. For my 21st birthday, my friend and I drove up to one of my most favorite spots in Washington. I thought that was a cooler way to celebrate my birthday than to go into a club and get shit-faced. After others have mentioned that it's best not to give a specific location, I won't disclose it. I also don't think the location is that important. People sharing their stories is what's important. We got there a little late in the day, 3 to 4 p.m. We still had plenty of sunlight left in the day since it was July and the sun stays out forever. I was a little nervous before we walked the trail for some reason, but there was still several people there which helped me feel more comfortable being that far out with no cell phone service that late in the day. It's about a half mile walk down to the views from the parking lot. My friend and I love photography and we're playing around with our DSLR cameras. It's difficult to really capture the scenery there. Photos just don't do it justice. Anyways, I eventually noticed we were probably the only people left there. It was oddly quiet, and I started getting an uneasy feeling. We had already been there for a while, and the longer we stayed, the uneasy feeling turned into terror and got more and more intense. The intensity being watched felt like someone was literally standing over my shoulder. The only thought running through my mind was, get out. It kept repeating over and over, get out, get out of here. That's freaking creepy, and that has been reported so many times. Since my friend wasn't far from Washington, hadn't been hiking much before, I told him we should get going since the sun was settling. I didn't want to frighten him with how scared I was, so I didn't tell him. I just explained that we should get going since it's getting late and had a three plus hour drive home. He agreed, he agreed we should get going too. That was the longest half a mile walk of my life. Usually my head was on a swivel whether I'm out hiking or in the city. I didn't look around much to try to confirm these feelings of being watched because I really didn't want to see what had been watching us. I was thinking it was a bear or a cougar. I just put my head down and walked as fast as I could to my car. I remember thinking, whatever you are, we mean no harm. We are respecting your wishes and leaving. I never asked my friend if he got the same feeling until recently. If it weren't for your videos, I never would have asked him. And he said he didn't have that feeling, but he trusted my instinct of, it's getting late, we should get going. The last several years, I always wondered why I got that uneasy slash terror feeling. I chalked it up to maybe as a cougar since there had been sightings within the area. After hearing so many stories on your channel, I'm sure someone had an encounter with one of these beings, reported it, and that sign was put up to warn everyone the cougar in the area. Now I have no doubt is one of those beings. Many others have said, I know what I saw. Well, for me, I know what I felt. It's an uneasy feeling that made me very sick to my stomach, gave me chills, and thinking about it today has had the same effect. As I am writing this, I just remember another strange thing happened, but it was on base. The run route we used, to, we used for a fitness test was a strip of road that leads to a dead end. It's surrounded by a wooded area. People run and walk on this short road to prepare for their fitness test all the time. One day, I decided to go run and see what my time was since our fitness test was coming up soon. Surprisingly, it was the, I was the only one there. I figured since it was lunchtime, that at least one other person would be out there. Before starting my run, I felt really nervous for some reason. I'd run in this area almost every other day for two years. Why this nervous feeling now? I made it to the end of the road without stopping, stopped to catch my breath, checked my time, turned around, and started walking for a little bit. Then I heard something in the wooded area just behind me. It sounded like a person was about to rush up on me. I heard the individual steps through the brush, the distinct swish, 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 very fast steps. I stopped and looked behind me, and when I didn't see anyone, I had the most terrifying feeling come over me. I never deployed, but the scariest thing I've done in the military was rappel down a 40-foot tower in basic training, and I am terrified of heights. I would rather have to climb up that rappel tower to where the steps are very far apart, look over the edge once at the top. Here's the absolute worst part lay backwards towards the ground and jump off that down wall before repelling down. I'd rather go through that over and over than experience the terror I felt this day when I ran by myself. It was eerily quiet. No birds chirping. Weird. I started running again to get the hell out of there. When I ran, it would follow me. When I stopped, it stopped. Now I know better than to run in situations like this, thanks to you. I looked back behind me again in the woods but couldn't see anything. No bear, no deer, no lost dog slash cat, etc. Fine being honest, I didn't really want to see anything either. 
needless to say, that's the fastest I've ever ran. I never ran by myself again. I remember telling my friends that we were in my unit. I remember telling my friends they were in my unit, and they laughed it off. They said it was probably a bird, a squirrel, a deer, or a lost dog. Squirrels and deer don't chase people. Squirrels and deer can't make that same footstep sounds like a human. It could have been a dog, but why would the dog have stayed in the woods? Dogs don't do that, and their footsteps and their footsteps sound sounds much different than humans. Knowing what I know now, I know what it was. Some people may be thinking, if you're on a military base, how would it get past the fences? If these, if these beings can teleport, I believe they can, then that's how. Thank you for telling these stories. It's helped me understand what I experienced several years ago. I've tried emailing this numerous times, but the email stays stuck in my drafts, which is so odd to me. Hmm. Well, it's here now, buddy. Also, I really like the music you use for your intro-outro. My one-year-old likes it too, and we'll dance to it. LOL, Cherie. I hope I pronounced that right. C-H-E-R-E-E. Cherie? Cherie, thank you very much for sending that in. And, uh, you know, for everybody that does email me in, they're not sure what it was. Just the fact that you emailed me and sought out this channel tells yourself and, and all of us, you know what it was. You know what it was. But anyway, so much going on out there. And as far as military bases go, it's overwhelming how many sightings and how many interactions there are with these beings on very secure military bases, including uh, nuclear missile silo bases. They have penetrated the barriers and gotten up their faces into the security cameras numerous times. What's going on there? I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue. How can they be so stealthy? I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody knows the absolute uh, reasons on how these beings can possess such, such mind-boggling skills. It's really something else, isn't it? But anyway, I gotta get going. This is it. I am absolutely starving. I'm tired. It's been a long, it's been not long, but the past eight days, this is what I've done. I've been going to all these places in the chest waders and a fishing rod, and hiking, and fishing, and filming, and sharing. And um, it's just what I do. It's funny, I was thinking about it today, just how many places I've taken the world, the 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 How to Hunt YouTube channel audience. I've taken everybody to a lot of different places this past year and a bit, haven't I? Kind of reflects back and I reflect back on myself and my life and, <laughs> and how much time I actually spend out here um, hunting and fishing and exploring. It's quite a bit. But anyway, I better get going. I better get going and go get some sleep, get some food, so that I can get uh, rested up and energized up so I can keep doing this and keep sharing it. 